Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the October 10th, 2019 meeting of the Burlington Conservation Commission. Is there anyone, uh, the first item is citizens time. You, are you in the audience or anyone in the audience for something not on the agenda? Nope. Everyone's shaking their head no. Okay. All right. So uh, next is approval of minutes. We have the minutes of September 26, 2019. Are we in a position to approve? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. That's what, six zero zero. All right. Okay, so now we have skipped right down to item four. Uh, notice is given that the commission will hold a public meeting during which time? Uh, we have a request for determination of applicability filed by Creeker and Denise Crumlian and will be acted upon by the Commission. The Commission is taking information related to the installation of a patio within a 100-foot buffer zone to bordering vegetative wetlands. The project's located at 16 St. Mary Road in Burlington. Uh, the application's heard pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 131, Section 40, which is the Wetlands Protection Act and Burlington Bylaw Article 14. The application material is available in the Conservation Office for public review. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So please go through the introductions and then the floor is yours. I'm Scott Peacock, SJ Peacock Builders. Denise Crumlian. All right, good to see all three of you. Yeah. Thank you. It's all yours. So as you might remember, we were here back in June, um, putting extra drainage in the backyard. We're getting a lot of water in the backyard, had water problem in the basement. So the engineer designed the new drainage system for the back so we could uh, swell everything towards the new drainage system, get, keep it away from the house. Um, we also decided to, uh, to do a bad patio back there against the house, um, an extra precaution, and to, obviously for them to use, you know, to make the house a little bit better back there. Okay. Uh, John. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yep. So uh, this uh, filing is, is in response to an enforcement call or letter or something that we we contacted the owners and uh, the contractor um, because uh, the work had already begun. We got um, notification from a neighbor that the yard, uh, well, they said what's going on and um, they sent photos and it was clear it was more than just the work for the, for the um, infiltration pipe or the backyard was, was dug up. I don't know, remember if I forwarded the photos to you, but um, it's a fairly large area um, from where the pipe was towards the house. Um, so the concern, the only concern with this, it's, it's in the buffer zone, it's not very close to wetlands, the work will not impact wetlands, so it's more of a, a runoff issue to make sure that the in, increased imperviousness doesn't run off onto the neighbor's property. That's, that's their concern. Um, obviously this neighborhood has a lot of water problems, these people have water problems, right. um, everybody you know, down the street has water problems. Is, you know, um, as you remember, down on our Arnold Terrace, they had water problems. So th there's, there's issues, um, and we just want to make sure that this project does not um, make the neighbor's situation any worse than it currently is. Okay. All right, so the main issue is the drainage. Correct. Okay. All right, so uh, do you have comments on that issue at all, about drainage going in the wrong direction off, off the property to someone else's? Just, just a little bit. Um, yeah. So the areas that were disturbing, they all would need to be disturbed anyways because the way that uh, design was done for this drainage, everything's supposed to pitch to it. So the, the backyard pitches were going to have to change anyways. So really all we're doing is putting pavers on the inside towards the house, and that whole area was going to get disturbed. I don't think anyone really understood that from the meeting, but this drainage is all the way up to like ground level and all the water from the house and from the backyard is supposed to pitch towards it. So the grades had to be changed enough to make that work. Um, what we're doing really um, is taking all the water that's coming from the backyard, from the house, going into that drainage. Nothing's going onto anyone else's property. If anything, the other people's water is coming onto this property and that's causing the problem that we're alleviating. Okay. All right, uh, so let's see if there's any other questions on this. Uh, Indra, anything further? So you're using pavers? These will be set on gravel? What's that? Are they set on gravel? Yeah, uh, they're, you know, stone dust gravel. Yeah. 
Okay, and uh, I guess that's it. Anything else? I have one question on this drawing. It says, um, I guess I don't quite understand. Like it shows a planting area, but then it says no planting area yeah, needed. That was just a, the landscaper had done a preliminary design, and okay. so I wrote over it saying no landscape, no uh, landscaping around it. So it's just the wall. Uh, there's no, there's no um, flower, there's no flower beds around it. Is this an existing wall or one that's being built? It's part of the patio. It's, it's patio pavers. Mm -hmm. So that's right where the drainage is, the same spot. So it, kind of when the water comes across the back, it kind of hits the patio, the wall, and goes into the drainage. Okay, and is the the wall higher than the patio? Is that? It's at the edge of the patio. So yeah. this part, this, the wall is at the edge of the patio, and then on the other side of the patio is the drain. And yeah, so how much taller than the? No, it's, it like, the wall it's is... like a sitting wall, so it's a couple of feet higher. Okay. And so, and then the pitch goes towards the drain on the other side of the wall, so it's extra to help make sure the water goes into the drain. And where does your water go from your patio? Towards that drain. Towards that drain. Yep. Okay, so there's yep. openings sure. through the exactly. wall. Exactly. Get it. Okay, all right. Okay. I'm good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Bill. Uh, so the, the trench itself, is that connected to the previously installed in, in, infiltration system? Yes, it is. It is going to be. It's okay. going, it's, it's, it's uh, almost tripling the existing one and it's added to it. They, they tie into each other. They do? Okay. Yeah. And that one's been done. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> And that one is working okay? I mean, I'm just looking at the grades and stuff. It actually looks like it's a lower gradient than the wetland, you know, in the back of the yard. So that is still working fine. It's not filling up and puddling or anything where that drainage is. It's a working process. So, so far, yeah. it's... That drain yeah. just went in. Yeah. So oh, it did? It, yeah. it says it existing. I thought that was from a previous... Oh, it, it was from the June meeting that when we were here, but it's just, oh, the work's just getting done now. Okay, just you're getting about the infiltration system? Yes. That, that was there when they built the house. So the new drain is getting attached to that. Okay. So, but the new drain has just been placed. Right, but then right. we had to put the work on hold. So okay. But the infiltration the system appears to be functioning. And it's, 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 even though it's the, uh, I'm just looking at the, the gradient of the yard. It's looks like the infiltration system is at a point that's two feet lower than the wetland higher up, you know. So, um, but I'm sure at the time we made sure that it was going to function with the uh, test pit or whatever. Uh, okay, that's my, always my only concern. So it is con that is connected to that infiltration. Good. Yep. All right. Thank you. Uh, John, anything? Uh, nothing. Ed, anything further? Initial concern was the uh, water was coming in from neighbors also that infiltrated that. So this added to that is obviously going to hopefully take care of that. Yep. They both mix or come to that same point. Correct, yeah, there's an awful lot of water that's coming um, across from the neighbor to the left and from the back. And that seems to gonna relieve it so they can't get to the house. Okay. Uh, John, is anything further regarding erosion controls needed or what they have? Um, so there is a, con a draft condition to put in waddles. Yeah. Does it, the drawing, does it do you have waddles We have there? waddles there. Okay. And we're going to be disturbing right through those waddles with the pitch. Yeah. And then we th we're going to fix everything from there. So the back between the patio, the waddles will be regraded, reseeded. All right. No, that's fine. Okay. All right. Then there's nothing further. Is there anyone in the audience for this? It's uh, 16 St. Mary Road? No. All right. So we have a negative conditional determination which means that we don't think it's going to be a major problem, but there are a few conditions. And the, we'll review it and then vote. Okay. Okay, so the findings are um, description, the project description, the jurisdictional wetland areas, which have been discussed in previous filings. Um, yeah, um, then there's one about the, um, so the, the findings are basically given some of the history of the previous filings. Conditions, uh, first condition is no other work is allowed beyond, besides what was covered under this, so don't do any other work without, please don't do any other work beyond what's in this determination of applicability. Um, the second condition is about the waddles. Um, third is about 
removal of uh, soil, any extra soils need to be um, removed or certainly not deposited in the back near the wetlands. Stockpiling within 50 feet of wetlands, no tracking in the roadway, no filling or grading. Um, so that should be actually changed a little because I didn't really understand that it was being pitched towards the trench. So I'll, I'll sort of revise that to reflect that. <coughs> but it's minor grading yes. to uh, direct it to the trench. Um, run off from the new, it shall be directed to um, the infiltration trench. It shouldn't be stone, it should just be to the infiltration trench. And then the standard conditions about dumping and whatnot, um, pesticides, reminder not to mow beyond the lawn. Um, that's it. I mean, beyond the fence. Okay, any changes from the commission? Any comments or you're all set? Set. Okay. Uh, therefore, could I have a motion to issue a negative conditional determination for the project at 16 St. Mary Road under Burlington Bylaw Article 14 in the State Wellness Protection Act? It's moved. Second. Second. All in favor? 600. Good luck with your project. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Have a good evening. Uh, next is continued public hearing, 175 Bedford Street. It's the site improvements, including installing stormwater, best management practices, DEP file number 122-632. Well, good evening. Good evening. So please go through the introductions again. Kenneth Jong, 175 Bedford Street, LLC. Chris Jung or Christopher Jung, uh, Mac Designer Hardware co-owners with Ken Jung. Right. Bree Sullivan, Bayside Engineering. You all look very familiar. I think we've seen you before. <laughs> no, it's open. Okay. Uh, do you want to say anything further or should we just... So we... Um... We had our opening hearing with planning. Yes. I don't know if they sent you a memo. Um, they never do. <laughs> we, we, we send, send them, them memos. They don't send us. Memos. We do send them memos. So it went relatively well. There were there were minor changes, but not involving any structures or pavement or anything like that, or any of the right. dumpster locations, nothing like that. They wanted to see some striping on the plans. They wanted some planting in front of the building in an existing. Um, soil area. So it should so, all be native species. Native species. Yeah. So they have a, you might want to get a list from the, um, especially so close to the river. <laughs> but other than that, there were no other major changes. We expect to close at the next meeting. So I don't anticipate there being any, any substanti substantial changes to this. All right, thank you. Uh, John or Eileen, do you have any further concerns with the project? Are we ready to move on it? Um, I don't think we have any concerns. It's, it's a tight project. It's in the flood zone and the flood way. Um, they're, they're, the, the size of the um, structure that they're moving is going to be the same. Um, there's no way for this project to um, adhere to all the stormwater standards, but I think under circumstances, it's designed as well as it could possibly be, as, as, as well as can, is feasible. Right. So I have no major concerns. All right. So does the commission have any further comments on this? I don't believe we had anything that they had to give us for this meeting. I like the, I like the Anybody? effort you put into it. It's been very good. They adjusted the O&M just to um, make sure it was clear about the um, sweeping and cleaning and snow storage. And was there something else that you updated? <coughs> I think that was it. Okay. I don't hear anything further. All right, so we have draft documents to review, <coughs> discuss if needed, but then we'll have a vote. Oh, yeah, okay. I do. You already have some? Do you have copies? I do. I sent them copies. An extra, if you have an extra Okay, uh, we'll start with the bylaw. Um, the project involves modifications to an existing commercial facility. Ex external modifications consist of reconstruction of a loading dock, repaving, installation of stormwater features. Work will occur within the 200 foot riverfront area of Vinebrook, bordering land subject to flooding, and within the 100 foot buffer to bank. Uh, the filing history just explains the history. Um, wetland values and area subject to protection, as already stated, it will be within the 100 foot um, inner riparian. 
and, um, and within uh, BLSF. Um, the location of the resources is shown on the reference plans. The Commission agrees with the depicted location of these resource areas. Riverfront area alteration proposed for this project is 16,775 square feet, of which 12,375 will be within the inner riparian and 4,400 in the outer riparian. Total riverfront area on the property is 25,850 feet. The grass channel, infiltration basin and depressed vegetation, vegetated areas constitute a reduction by 15% of impervious area. Uh, besides stormwater management improvements, the other proposed exterior work involves replacing and removing moving the loading dock, which will be the same size. Um, both will be within BLSF and the floodway. The Commission finds that the new dock meets the performance standards for BLSF as it is the same size and no closer to the brook. Uh, the Commission finds there are no practical, practicable and st substantially equivalent economic alternatives with less adverse effects. Um, Going through briefly the stormwater, the standards, um, the redevelopment will, will not create any new dis, uh, untreated discharges. Um, calculations were provided to show that peak discharge rates shall not increase. Standard three, there will be an increase in recharge to the maximum extent practicable. Um, standard four, TSS removal will be increased to the maximum extent practicable. This is not a lupal. Um, Stormwater discharges from the project site drain to a zone two. The project does not meet standards for treatment within critical areas, but treats stormwater to the maximum extent practicable. Um, this is a redevelopment project. Erosion and sedimentation controls will be in implemented during construction. The project owner will adhere to an O&M plan, and the project does not create any new, new illicit discharges. Um, under the new proposal, 56% of the total impervious area will be treated. Currently, there is no stormwater treatment on the site. Um, then, um, some other highlights of the bylaw just include that we require weekly inspections and um, must adhere to the other conditions of the bylaw, which we'll go through in a minute. And we're proposing um, a performance guarantee in the amount of $7,500. $7, um, so, going on to the order of conditions, if you're ready. Um, the first Several are as standard, um, just for the um, Jongs in case they didn't know. Um, page two, there will be a, a pre-construction um, site meeting um, with the de department staff before the meeting, and at that time we'll be checking to see that you've got um, erosion controls in place, your DEP sign up, uh, dumpster ready, things like that. Um, erosion controls shall be installed in accordance with the reference plans. Um, there shall be no dewatering permitted on this site. No materials shall be stockpiled within 100 feet of the bank or the inner riparian zone unless covered and encircled with hay bales. Applicants shall sweep um, paved surfaces daily. Catch basins shall be protected with silt sacks or equivalent within 100 feet of the work. Um, no grading without contacting the conservation department. Um, again, the next few are standard about dumpsters shall be brought to the site for construction is ongoing. You already have a dumpster there. Um, page four, um, these are all standard conditions about um, if there's um, evidence of material, of uh, hazardous material, you shall immediately cease work and contact the Conservation Department and Board of Health. No more than 50 gallons of fuel or maintenance chemicals shall be stored in the riverfront area. Um, any fill material brought on site should be free of asphalt or debris. Beginning the first week of construction, you are required to submit a weekly written report to the Conservation Commission from a PE or approved wetland scientist. Um, stormwater uh, management conditions. The installation or construction of stormwater management features shall, shall be certified by a registered PE and submit documentation stating that the installation uh, was conducted properly in compliance with all requirements. Um, sub should submit a long-term operations and maintenance plan, which has been done. No invasive species should be planted anywhere within Burlington. Um, no pesticides, herbicides, or fungicides uh, across the whole site. Planting should be done in accordance with the approved plan. Um, mulch debris, sediment, lawn clippings, landscape materials shall not be dumped on the stream bank or in the stream. And any, any unstable areas of the stream bank shall be stabilized with vegetation after consultation with the conservation administrator or by another method approved by the Conservation Commission. A snow management plan shall be submitted prior to the issuance of a certificate of compliance. In no cases shall snow be pushed into the Vinebrook. 
Um, and then the, the remainder is just uh, conditions required to uh, achieve your certificate of compliance. Okay, a lot of these are, they're extensive but routine conditions. Uh, do you have any concerns about anything? Even if not now, you can always ask for clarification so from the I, office. I guess the question is about the $7,500 performance guarantee. Is that, can that be in the form of like a permit bond or what exactly is that usually? Or is that cash that we have to put in? I just want to understand. That's easiest. Sorry? That's easiest. Like a, a, check. Per, a, yeah, well, a check. A check. Not, not really actually cash, but a check. <laughs> okay. We did so, get somebody bringing in cash recently. Wow. <laughs> no, I, 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 just yeah. quite a lot of cash. <laughs> I understand. So it actually has to be that or can it be a bond issued by like a, an insurance company or something? You could do that. It has to be for a minimum of three years though. All right. For residential projects, we don't allow that, but for commercial projects, we, we still do. All right. So, um, I'm sorry. I, it just occurred to me one other finding. We need, we need to add a finding about the Natural Heritage and Endangered Species uh, letter. We, we did get a letter saying that there was no impact. Um, they, were, they're, they are within a, um, a mapped habitat, but there's a letter, and we'll okay. reference that in the references right. as well. All right. On the left, any questions? I just one that you are going to make the change to the findings where it says report every two weeks to agree with. These were already printed. Yeah, I didn't print it out again, but yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. So On the right, any weekly inspection reports submitted not weekly. Not, right. Yeah. I have a couple questions too, if you if you. Would. Yeah. Go ahead. I, so with respect to the uh, erosion controls, are straw waddles sufficient? The site's pretty flat. Um, I don't expect there to be any. Breakout erosion. Well, let's let's see what they recommend, uh, John. You're resurfacing so, the parking lot, right? Yes. What is what is the um, loading dock construction going to entail? Uh, well, there's a there's a partially deteriorated concrete loading dock there. Um, it's going to come out, and the a small section of the loading dock will be a solid fill structure similar to that, and the rest is going to be an elevated platform with a concrete deck. But what sort, what sort of excavation do you have to do for that? Not for a whole lot. lot. It's not, we're not going to be excavating the entire area, so uh, maybe something more robust in that area would be. Yeah, yeah. so hay bales in that area and then yeah. uh, uh, wattles in the rest. Yeah. Okay. All right, that's, does that sound like a good plan yes. to the commission? <laughs> yeah, that sounds reasonable. All right, anything further? Uh, the, I don't know, the Wetlands Protection Act, number 38, could you clarify for me? So prior to, so after we strip the pavement, and there's a minor regrading in the parking lot so we can get it to flow to the basin in the back, you, right. want, you want to inspect the site before we regrade, is that correct? Sure, that is. That, that uh, it depends what, isn't it depend on what minor grading means? Uh, the rest of the site will be left. As graded. As graded, except for the drainage, the drainage channel, the grass drainage channel, and the basin behind the building, the infiltration basin behind the building. Well, didn't they, it's because that was, it, wasn't that part this of the, part yeah. of the plan. yeah, so I think that covers that. It would only be if you were doing it. Only if it's not part of the plan. plan. No so this rating. only applies so if additional hey, we're going to do something else and you would have to come out and say, all right, we need to file, yes. file an Okay, right. so if we're going according to the plan, they do not have to notify. Right. Okay. Right. <clears throat> you, can, you can call us tomorrow or Monday if you have something else. Okay. No, that was Before it. it. Could you, could you uh, also look at number 35? Uh, no materials will be stockpiled within 100 feet of the bank or the inner riparian zone. Due to the nature of the site, can you actually do that? You can't. No, I mean, unless you, unless you stock them in the front, but then you... Is that, is that practical? It's not practical, no. All right, so... Uh, I, so the, we would just want to circle the hay bales. Right. Yeah. So, okay. so if it's that close to the brook, unless it just it needs... Circle the hay bales. Yeah. Right. And I assume okay. the commission for a straw, is that correct, not hay? That'd be nice, sure. Okay. All right. Salt marsh. Right? Okay, so that takes care of that. Uh, and number 50, it says the applicant shall submit a long term operation and maintenance plan for the stormwater mm -hmm. management features. And then the next sentence refers to 
It should be maintained in accordance with an operation and maintenance plan. Is there a, am I missing something? Is there a difference between the long-term operation and maintenance and the operation and maintenance without No, the it's just the two sentences. One is just saying shall submit and the other one is saying shall adhere to. What's that? I, I, it is me. Nobody can hear me tonight. <laughs> no. I said the first sentence says shall submit a plan and the second one says Yeah, no, what I'm, shall what I'm asking is one, one, it's referred oh, to as operation and maintenance plan and the other is a long-term operation and maintenance plan. No. It's, it's the same thing. It's the same thing? Yeah. Okay. We usually differentiate between construction period, maintenance of erosion and control, and then there's a long-term right. operation and maintenance. Right. Okay. I just wanted to make sure what they intended when they wrote that. Okay. All right. And that was part of the stormwater report, um, and uh, that does include the steps and the, the schedule for maintenance of these being right. Used. Yes. All right. So. All right. So, if if there anything further from anyone, is there anyone in the audience for this one? Uh, this is 175 Bedford Street. Nope. Okay. So we're ready to proceed. Could I have a motion to close the hearing on 122-632? So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? 600. Could I have a motion to uh, issue the findings under Burlington Bylaw Article 14 for 175 Bedford Street? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Same vote. Could I have a motion uh, to issue the order of conditions? A DEP file number 122-632, 175 Bedford Street, under Burlington Bylaw Article 14, and the State Wetlands Protection Act. Second. Second. All in favor? Same vote. And could I have a motion for a $7,500 performance uh, surety? Uh, requested under Burlington Bylaw Article 14 for DEP file number 122-632 uh, for 175 Bedford Street. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Same vote. Good luck with your project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next item on the agenda is number six. It's a continued public hearing. Notice of intent, three Murphy Court, lot number two, uh, Lexington Trust. Robert W. Murray is the trustee. Construct a new single family dwelling. It's DEP file number 122-633. Good evening. Good evening. Um, so it's Excel here for Robert Murray. All right, good to see you. Well, nice to be here. Sure. All right, so. You've been here many times before, so do you have anything more to add on this project? Well, I do. Um, thank you for sending me the conditions. Um, we we did, uh, did not agree with a couple of the conditions. Okay. And um, actually one of them. The okay. first one uh, gave us the option uh, to erect a post and rail fence. What number? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, landscaping number 47. Okay. Let's uh, look at that. Mm -hmm. yeah. cool. Okay. And uh, along the 20 foot uh, uh, no disturb line, we're asked to uh, either erect a post and rail fence or shrubs and we'd like to use shrubs. Um, I'm not sure what type we would use. I'd like an evergreen. Um, I know normally boxwood. Uh, I tend to like holly, um, but um, they would be two, two and a half to three feet at the time of planting. And uh, I did show on the plan what it would be along this, this line right here. We cannot okay. plant anything in the easement. Right. You know that. So. Right. So I would just say that they're so they're close enough together so that you know people aren't going around them with wheelbarrows or thinking right. that they're you know property they can landscape beyond there. Um, uh, and I, I would vote not for boxwoods. Yeah. Why is that, Gail? Well, I don't think they'll get as tall um, or as wide as the others, and also they're they're much more susceptible to winter damage. And um, you mean the hall? Is it in a sunny area? 
Is it full sun? Not, no, it isn't. It's shade. It's, it's partial right now. Always do well in part shade. Uh, they like sun. Do they? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, like inkberry would be probably good, um, which is like a boxwood, but it's native and it's um, more hardy. Um, it's actually a holly. Yeah, it's you're right, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, different holly. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, do they grow to be about four to five feet also? Yep. And they There's build. There's some right outside our, our building. If you yeah. come in the back door, and go with the shrubs on the They floor. come in all different varieties. There's some that are, you know, grow about that high and wide. There's some that are more columnar that, you know, you can grow tall. Um, what about holly? You, you, you can go, I mean, I think if they're too shaded, they're, they won't grow as well. I mean, they, they like sun. There has to be American holly, not like Japanese. Yeah, I've got a beautiful American holly. It's awesome. <laughs> is, is Japanese holly not native? It's not. Native. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. We get winter. Winterberry is not as dense, kind of. But yeah, the inkberry is kind of a nice. Plant. Okay, I'll look into that one. Has is like it, a, it's an evergreen. Yes, and it has like a little blackberry usually, rather than a. Um, it, but I mean, if it if it gets some sun, the American holly would probably do okay. I mean, they grow in the woods, but they tend to look <coughs> kind of scraggly and don't get as many berries and stuff when in the shade. And I, I was thinking of a variety, actually, not just one type of shrub, maybe a few different. Oh, kinds. different kinds, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that might be a, a little nicer. Just rhododendron, just maybe. Them. You know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you have any others? Yes. Uh, the number 49. A minimum of 10 native trees to be planted on, on the property within the buffer zone to the BWV, BVW. Um, we'd like to reduce that number. Um, we're already planting two trees for the planning board. And that would be two trees per lot. We, we will be, so that's six trees there, but two on this lot. And can't plant any trees over here because of the drainage structures. We'd like, right here, it would be too close to the house. Um, we'd like them to have some sun. So we're, we've come down to five trees, one on the north side over here, and then two in the, um, within the 24th. Um, is that in the easement? Not in the drainage easement. Oh, it's not, okay. No, okay. but it's where it, it would be allowed within the 20 foot um, buffer. Uh, there's all, there's, there's vegetation back here mm. now. Are they trees? So trees? I, we'd like to have some sun for the, for the people living there. And I, I just, can't see planting. Climate change is going to be really hot. <laughs> the shade is nice. <laughs> no, shade is nice. Yeah. So, so, you want, need some sun also. so, in that, you know, the area where you're talking about the buffer zone, why only two over there? I mean, well, there's already vegetation there. Are there trees? Uh, no, some trees. Because, I mean, the trees have more value than just kind of, you know, low shrubs and things like that. Um, Five is a lot less than ten. <laughs> All right. So, so just to give, yeah. so we came up with the ten number because we realized that we didn't require any on the other lot. Oh. The lot that's already uh, built and maybe occupied. Is it occupied? It's or close. To be close. There but, um, we looked at that order and we didn't require any, so we figured we'd double down on this I one. See. But it's probably, it, okay. it, you know, ten might be too many on this lot. But. Are there going to be any along the drive? There'll be two in front. So there's six, there I think, six street trees for the cul-de-sac? Six cul street trees. For the, uh, per the, the, the planning board. And, uh, All right. So, so let's, let's, let's decide on a number. They're proposing five. And we, what did we request, ten? We did. Mm -hmm. But that was so, the Okay. Do, do is there anybody on the commission object to five? So these are going to be native trees? <laughs> mm -hmm. And the ones along the cul-de-sac, are they native? They'll be. I, I would like to say on the uh, lot number five, um, well, on this lot also, we had the issue of the easement, but we also had a, um, a no disturb, and we actually left a lot more trees along the backyard here, a real swath of trees. 
so we didn't chop down as many as we were committed to. Uh, we left a, a good number of trees there. All right, let's move this along. Does anybody on the commission object to five trees? No. No. All right. So we're changing that to five trees. Thank you. All right. Did you have anything else? Okay. Say what? Probably don't need to go. Right. We just discussed it. All right. Is there anything else? Uh, so we were just saying we, we probably don't need to go point through point. I mean, the applicant has already read through the decision. It's fairly standard. Yeah. That's fine. Unless you want to for your no. benefits. <laughs> I mean, you, got, you guys have it. Had it We've had it. I had yeah. it. <laughs> All right. So if there's nothing further, uh, the record should show there's no one in the audience for this. Okay. Uh, any further comments? No. Could I have a motion to close the hearing on DEP file number 122-633? We'll move. Second. 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 All in favor? Six zero zero. Could I have a motion to adopt the findings under Burlington Bylaw Article 14 for file number 122-633? So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Same vote. Could I have a motion to adopt the permit conditions, order of conditions under Burlington Bylaw Article 14 and the State Wetlands Protection Act for file number 122-633? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Same vote. Uh, requesting a performance bond. What's the recommendation? Oh. It's, uh, it was 30, uh, 3500 3500 All right. Could I have a motion to require them to post a performance surety of $3,500 under Burlington Bylaw Article 14 for file number 122-633? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Six zero zero. Good luck with the project. Thank you very much. Sure thing. Have a good evening. Okay. Next on the agenda, uh, we have. Sorry, this is just details. Okay. Do we have planning board comments? No. Uh, subcommittee of staff reports. Okay, I have one thing. Uh, the, the Citizens Committee uh, for that is promoting the passage of the Community Preservation Act uh, made a decision that, for a variety of reasons, that we're going to be uh, presenting to the May Town Meeting, uh, looking for their permission for the voters to decide on the ballot question of whether to adopt the Community Preservation Act. And the actual ballot question would therefore appear on the November presidential ballot. Okay. Okay. So everyone on the commission will probably be getting, your, we have your names, we have your emails, we know where you live. You'll be getting a few emails from us okay, on that citizens committee. Uh, next we have upcoming meetings, October 24th and November 14th. Do we need to vote? A one meeting schedule in November because of the holiday, or did we already do that? You already did that. You did it for the whole year. Okay. All right. Okay, so the next meeting, October 24th and November 14th. All right. Is there other? 20, 24th of Thursday? 20. Is it probably not. I thought the 25th was a Monday, but no, you're probably right. Um, let's take oh, it is 24th. Yeah. It's yeah. 10th. We have two signatures. One, yeah. One more signature. One more signature. One more signature. Okay. Uh, is there anything further about this meeting? Do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Six zero zero. All right. Very good. Okay. <laughs> Outstanding. Second. Post for a record. Post for a record, right?